that seems like quite a long intro I've done there, but um, finally, <laughs> it's made of wood. It did arrive with five rusty strings. If you equate sustain to the weight of the guitar, it's got it all going on, no doubt about that. It's a, it's a knockoff Les Paul. It's a great knockoff Les Paul. You know, £499. If you're in the market for a, a, a Les Paul copy at that price range, this is one of them. Hi everyone, thank you for joining me this morning. Good to see you again. So, what have we got? Well, something a little bit different at last. Uh, we finally got a different Les Paul. This is the Sire Larry Carlton L7. Or as I like to call it, the Larry Paul, uh, for obvious reasons. Um, this came from Anderton's in the UK, £499 I paid for it. And these are apparently very highly rated guitars, so I'm, I'm looking forward to, um, to finding out why and if it's true. Um, in fact, Anderton's was kind of saying, I think, in their review of this series, that this is one of their, if not their, best-selling um, guitar uh, range at the moment. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to... Um, to, to see. Sire, uh, which is a brand that that they've been making the Marcus Miller basis for a while, a little bit of, you know, a little bit of history there. And I believe they are kind of originate from a Korean company called Dame Guitars. There's a there's a lot of um similarities between this new new range of Sire guitars and um Korean Dame guitars, um, as I have discovered. Um, but they launched this this range about a year ago, teamed up with Larry Carton and launched a range of guitars, which include a 335 alike, the H7, a Strat alike, which they call the S7, and this Les Paul alike, which they call the L7. So, um, you know, Larry Carton, Les Paul, there's some similarities there. So that, that gave me... A brilliant opportunity to to chuck in another stupid idea. We've got the Larry Paul. <laughs> okay, <laughs> moving on. This came from Anderton's. I'm not complaining, especially because it's not a big deal. But it arrived. I mean, it's obviously you know brand new because it's got the you know plastic on the the pickup covers and you know there's no marks on it. But it did arrive with five rusty strings. Um, yeah, there was a string missing. It wasn't in the box. Someone's taken a string off or broken it and not replaced it. And you can see, you know, you can see when there's rust on the strings. So not sure exactly what happened, but I think it might have missed one of their QC um, checks before it was sent out. So, um, you know, it's worth mentioning these things because I mean, the first thing I would do is change the strings anyway through this process, but um, not everyone's going to have a spare set of strings at home. Not that the captain or anyone from Anderton's is likely to be watching, but if if you are, you know, worth worth making a little note of that. Um, okay, so apart from that, I know nothing. So let's have a look and find out. We're going to go through all the specs and then we're going to take the five strings off uh, look under the pickups. We're going to weigh up this hardware and measure the neck and so on and so forth. And then we'll have a bit of a play, see what it sounds like. Okay, cool. Let's get stuck in. Specs. So that seems like quite a long intro I've done there, but um, finally, <laughs> it's made of wood. Okay, no, it's made of mahogany. Um, it's got a mahogany body. 
with a hard maple cap as per the time honored Les Paul design tradition, if you like. It's got a mahogany set neck, and obviously, you've got this nice modern, um, you know, heel that, that kind of improvement to the heel. Uh, I can see here it, it very easily, very quickly, very easily, very quickly. It's got a scarf joint on the neck, so it's not a it's not a, a single piece neck. It's nice, got a satin um, a satin finish to the neck, nice and smooth. Whereas the the back here is is hard gloss, so that's that's quite a nice little feature, isn't it? It's got. <laughs> I love the, I mean, obviously this is a sparkly gold um, finish, which you'll either love or you hate, but they do this in various um, uh, burst finishes as well with, with a maple veneer on the top, um, uh, like, like, like Epiphone um, do. Um, what I really like about, the, it's kind of, what's this, triple binding, quadruple binding, I don't know, but it's got this, this Les Paul custom sort of, a like binding it's got a sharper horn on there obviously to circumvent you know licensing issues with gibson this shape really do you know this shape really reminded me in particular of the and the way that the binding is of of the yamaha sgs do you remember remember the yamaha sgs i don't know why and also it's pretty heavy as well i'll weigh it in a minute but that also reminded me of the old yamaha sgs um, medium C shaped neck. It feels, you know, it feels like a decent kind of handful. We'll measure that up in a little bit so you can see exactly what that means. This has got an ebony fingerboard, proper ebony fingerboard, which a lot of people are going to love that, aren't they? £499 with an ebony fingerboard. This has also got rolled edges, like the high end custom shop guitars, the rolled edges, which makes it more comfortable. It does feel nice. Medium jumbo frets. They look pretty chunky to me. This has got a bone nut as well. Another proper kind of high-end appointment. Um, this has also got locking tuners. Uh, I believe these are Sire proprietary locking tuners. So again, a lot of people are going to like that. The... Um, the hardware, again, uh, this is again, this is Sire original proprietary, proprietary is the word, isn't it? Um, stuff, it's a, it's a version of a tunematic bridge and, and this tailpiece is aluminium, apparently. Uh, and it, it looks to be the shape of the old, you know, the, the kind of the vintage style one. So um, we'll weigh that in a minute to see see what that's all about. The pickups are Sire, Larry Carlton, humbuckers. There's no more information given on these, but we'll we'll we'll, we'll measure the outputs in a bit and we'll have a look underneath and see what's what's going on. Standard Les Paul control layout, two volume con two tone, top hat knobs, three way toggle switch, and you know, and what else? Nothing else really is there. That's it. So we'll have a look inside the thing in a minute. Cool. So it's, um, oh, how many pieces of wood? You can see this is four pieces. One, two, three, four. Four pieces of wood, that. Um, yeah, and as I said, heavy, so let's weigh it. Yeah, it's a bit of a bit of a hefty old beast, this. Let's, let's give it a weigh. What have we got? 9.6 pounds. 4.27 kilos, so yeah, it's a heavy old beast. Here you go. I think you can see the rust on those. Yeah, I think they've been on there a while, or in a damp environment. So let's get the um, let's get the strings off. So we can definitely start with this. It's got a, it's a lightweight aluminium tailpiece. It's it's really light. It weighs thirty two grams, pretty much the same as the uh, 
the Faber lightweight ones that we we put on to the um, we've put them on the Les Paul fifty nine limited edition, the the Yepofan one and the uh, the three three five. So this already comes with a a vintage style lightweight tailpiece. That's cool. The bridge. Let's see if that comes off. It says T O Matic. It says on the back T O Matic. T O Matic. Fifty nine. I think that's. I think that's less than the, the Epiphone ones. I'm not sure if this is aluminium as well. It says that this is aluminium. It doesn't say this is aluminium. I'd say that's steel. But I don't know. The posts look to be the same size as as Epiphone. Let's just grab an Epiphone bridge and see if it will fit. Not that anyone in their right mind would, would ever want to do this, but let's just find out for the sake of argument. This is, uh, this is the Epiphone bridge off of one of those guitars. It's not a... No, it's not. It's slightly out. It's slightly out. I mean, you could probably force that on if you wanted to, but I don't want to. Let's see about the old tailpiece. Again, Epiphone tailpiece. Yeah, that'll go. That'll go. So, yeah, that's... I think that would go. So, I think if you wanted to change the posts and put a Gibson bridge on, you probably could. Anyway. Just confusing things, aren't I? Move that out of the way. I couldn't resist. While we're in this place I've got these uh, post conversions that I've bought for an Epiphone and a and a and a Faber this one's got aluminium the brass saddles a Gibson style bridge so I'm just going to see if these posts will go in and if they do if this bridge would fit because there might be just enough tolerance for that to happen I might fall at the first hurdle here. So let's let's get this post out. This is a replacement, you see. It's got the... Hopefully that thread at the bottom's the same. Yeah, looks similar. Here we go. Gently does it. Right, that goes in. I'm going to put them both in. I'm not going to change it now, but I'm just going to see if it fits and then we can get back on track to see what, what we've actually been given rather than what we could turn it into. I'm just saying, you know, because some people might think, oh, well, let's, let's do something. Let's upgrade it. Because it could be... It could be a nice little basis for... A, a proper upgraded Les Paul. Now I noticed that these posts were slightly longer, so the other question will be whether they would go low enough. But I think they, they look like they are going to. Yeah. Right, let's... So those conversion posts go in now. Will the Faber sexy bridge fit? No, it's just not quite, no, it's not quite there. There you go. So the uh, the posts on this are slightly, there's a gnats in it. You could, you could probably, you, you, you could probably force it, but it's a gnats difference. Oh there. Handy to know. So in terms of um, just looking at the uh, the QC aspect of it, um, all looks nice. The binding looks really nice. The threats are smooth. Frets, frets, frets are smooth. 
the finish. Yeah, the binding all around there. It's all good. It's all well done. I've noticed a couple of tiny little things. Let's get this camera. So there's actually a split there. Which you should be able to see, which is a bit weird. Uh, oh, same, same there actually. Same there, a little cut in the board there. Where it's, it's like the. I wonder why that is. It's like someone's done that with a knife or or what? I don't know. It's a bit weird. You can also see a weird kind of discoloration on the edge of the wood there. Don't really know what that is. Hmm. Can't explain that. All right, let's have a quick look in the pickup cavity, shall we? Okay, so let's um, let's pop out the neck pickup first. Let's have a look. Oops. Not much, um, not much cable, chaps. Okay, so that's inside the neck pickup cavity. It's got pretty thick black shielding paint covering up everything. Um, but it, it looks to me like that would be the end of the neck tenon. It's what it kind of looks like, doesn't it? It looks like a, a long neck tenon in there. I couldn't say for sure, but that, that's what it looks like anyway in the, the darkness of the neck pickup cavity. There's no identification on the back of pickup neck. Jeez. There's no slack on this pickup at all. I don't even know if you can see anything under there. There's nothing to see. Just black shielding paint. Let's pop these screws back in and let's have a look in the uh, control cavity and see, see if there's any slack in there at all. So there you go on the wiring in this it's got this has got Korean ginseng pots in it all the cables gathered up and tidied up there with a the cable tie so if I'd have clipped that first I would have been out to get the pickups out there would have been some slack um, this has got standard caps can't see what they are but basic caps uh, all hand soldered um, I saw a review that Philip McKnight had done on one of these and he had treble bleeds on his volume pots this one doesn't have so I don't know if it's a different model or they've changed that for uh, whatever anyway this one hasn't and he's had alpha pots in as well so it was clearly a different iteration <laughs> generation I don't know anyway um, this has got 21 on the in the serial number 2n21 so made in indonesia so um so there you go nice nice tidy shielding there you go and uh a weirdly it's not my imagination it's just just not a perfect it's not a there's gaps let's have a look in the um and what we can see under the switch cover is a switch. Yeah, there's nothing else to see there. And the pickup measurements, the neck is 7.34 kilo ohms. And the bridge measures 7.65 kilo ohms. They're cool. Be interesting to see what they sound like. So here's the neck profile and measurements at the first fret. And here's the neck profile and measurements on the 12th fret. 
a nice looking fretboard, I must say. It's a shame about these cuts. They're weird, those cuts. It's almost like that's a kind of a second, really. It shouldn't be like that, I'm sure. It's a bummer that it happened to me, isn't it, really? All right, what we'll do now is we'll put a new set of strings on it and um, set it up, set up the action and check the intonation and then have a bit of a play. See what it sounds like. Cool. See you in a minute. Let's have a quick look inside the truss rod cover as well, actually, while we're here. And what have we got? Clean looking... Um, Epiphone style Allen wrench truss rod hole. There you go. The headstock, I like the headstock on this. I think there's been some positive comments all round about how nice, you know, this, this headstock looks. They've, you know, some people make a real, some brands make a real dog's dinner of the headstock, you know, try and overcomplicate it, whereas this is simple, clean. You've got the um, the binding that goes all around it as well. It gives it a real high end look. It look it looks like a quality item, if you like. Nice ivory binding goes, you know, frames the whole guitar. Nice logo. You know, nice you know Larry Carlton. Nice signature there, and the little subtle L7 on it. Cool. And these are premium locking tuners. Um, I must admit, I haven't, I haven't very often used locking tuners. I have a couple of guitars with locking tuners on. So let's uh, let's string up. They're meant to make it a lot easier to to restring, and um, yeah, I mean they do. Um, let's. Pop the hardware back on. Go. Now, the thing is with the old locking tuners, so they're meant to be quite easy. I can't even see where the bloody hole is. Right, so you pull it through the hole You don't, you don't need much slack on them at all. That's the whole point, that it's just locked, so you don't really need any slack. I'm going to have a little bit. I wouldn't be comfortable not having some. And then tighten it up. So I'm tightening it up <laughs> clockwise. I had to think about that. I, d I, ne the, I never know how tight you need to do these, so... I know they're meant to give you security, but for me, they they almost have the opposite effect because I think if I go too tight, it's going to break the string. So finger tight. That's it. Here we go. And then that's all you need. Cool. Let's get the rest on. The thing that I will say, uh, I haven't top wrapped this um, for two reasons. One, because it's a new guitar and I wanted to try it as it is first. Um, but if you look at the, now I'm sure you can see that this, the strings touch the back of the bridge. This tunomatic is quite wide, like 
the um, I think they call them the Nashville tunematics. They're quite wide that they used to have on Gibsons. Nowadays, they're more often using the ABL one style, which is narrower, and this is less of a problem. But you get what you get is the string touching the back, and if actually you can see, I don't know if you can see on this, but it's actually the low E string is actually touching the back. The others are clearing it a little bit. That could be why this string broke, because um, if you you know, if you put any pressure on that, it causes string breakages. And that's one of the reasons why people top wrap. However, if you top wrap this, there's not really... Um, I've, I've got that on the camera. I think you can see that. There's not really um, sufficient angle to, to make that very effective. You wouldn't have any, any angle on the saddle. It would be... <laughs> this is what I mean. You know, I don't know. I don't know if that would work on this. Interesting. It would be something to do with the neck angle. Um, whereas on the Gibson, it, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, all I know is that my R8, I can't top wrap it because the strings will pop off the saddle because there's not enough angle holding them on to the tailpiece so I don't think it's an option on this guitar anyway let's uh, plug it in and see what it sounds like shall we okay so here we are we're, we're plugged in uh, I've plugged into the uh, Marshall JCM 900 now but I have been doing that little dance that I always do with amps um, mucking around swapping them, trying to find one that's working for the guitar and the particular day, you know, what I'm hearing and what I'm feeling, what I'm playing and so on and so forth. And it's, I'm sure a lot of you know, but a lot of you might not know, it's more, it's more complicated than you might think. Amps are, are, are all very different. They've got very individual characteristics and in the way they work with a particular guitar. So I know lots of you have been asking about amps and me, you know, reviewing or demoing, reviewing or demoing or talking about amps. So I think I will do, if, you, if, you, if you'd like to see it, I will do a little thing. What I'd like to do, what I think I'm going to do is do a little demonstration of what I'm talking about here, which is to show you how one guitar can sound so different with maybe three or four different amplifiers. Um, there's a, there's um, you know, there's definitely something there to, to consider, you know, when you're buying an amp or a guitar, really, whether or not they're going to go together well and get the best sound, because, you know, you might, um, you might be surprised at how different things are um, when you plug in and how the pedals are another thing. Like, you know, you've you've set your drive pedals perfectly to to match the amp you're using, and if you swap the amp. The levels are all over the place because of the different headrooms that the amps have and so on and so forth. But I'll, yeah, I think I'll go into that in um, in another film. If uh, if you like to see that sort of thing, let us know in the comments because um, I think it's maybe time to experiment. I'm not going to go into pedals and stuff like that. I think there's too many other people that do that way better than I ever could. Um, I think I want to stick with guitars on this channel because that's really what I'm into. But obviously tube amps as well. I like tube amps. I've got a little collection as you as you might have seen. Um, so we should uh, we should look into that in a little bit more detail, I think, at some point. So yeah, let me know if um, if that would interest you, um, and uh, we might do that. So cool. So here's what it sounds like. Um, here we go on the uh, bridge pickup. Clean it up, just roll it off a little bit. So 
that stuff I was saying about amps uh, just now, um, I was trying to play, and I just didn't feel right. So um, I think the Marshall was too loud, maybe, for this particular studio. So I've gone back to the Black Star One Water, the H1 head through the Marshall 1936 vintage cab. And it sounds, sounds like this. <laughs> Not a lot, do it. I mean, it's got the same the same sort of characteristics. It's maybe just not quite as loud, so it's working for me. I hope. Let's see. Um. So it's quickly. So on the the controls. Volumes work. Well, the volume on the uh, bridge pickup works. The tone, however, there's not a lot roll off on the tone, and it just gets very dark. So I've had difficulty finding a, a good kind of woman tone on this guitar. Um, the bridge, the neck pickup. Does the job again? The tone. Not great. Okay, so um, let's try and play some stuff and go through some various sounds. Try and get some tones out of it. That's with the tube screamer on. That's without.
So I'm trying to film this wrap up really, this what do I think of this guitar. I, I'm just, I don't really know what I think of it. I, I do in so much as it's a really good value guitar. It's got all these great high end appointments, ebony fingerboard, rolled fingerboard edges, bone nut, locking tuners. So that's all that bit. It's got, you know, the pickups are decent. They, they're decent. You know, we'll have to obviously compare them to some others to actually nail that properly, but they seem like a nice vintagey sounding, you know, um, pickup. The hardware's cool. The wiring lets it down a little bit. It needs some, it needs some better pots to, to get the full benefit of what we've got going on here. And, um, you know, tonally, I didn't do a lot of, um, you know, power cordage in, in the playing demo today, um, but it will definitely do that. I mean, if you want to, you know, rock out with it, it will sustain for days. It absolutely will. The weight, you know, you can tell it's a heavy guitar. So if you equate sustain to the weight of a guitar, it's got it all going on. You know, no doubt about that. It's got the... Um, it's got the typical Les Paul foibles, you know, with the, the neck angle and that, that you've got, you know, here I can see that at least two of these strings are resting on the back of the bridge, which is not a good thing. You have to raise the tailpiece to, to stop that or, or do, a, do a, a top wrap if you can. But that's, you know, that's something you have to work around like you do with Les Paul. So it's, it's a shame they didn't think about that as well and maybe just put a narrower bridge on. That would probably fix that. Um, but beyond that, it's, um, you know, £499. If you're in the market for a, a, a Les Paul copy at that price range, this is one of them. And, you know, on paper, it, it, it's got it all going on. It, and it plays good and it sounds good um, and it feels good. OK, it's a little bit too heavy for my liking. Um, I, you know... You know, I think we're I think we're maybe trying to move beyond you know ten pound Les Pauls, and this is scratching that. And but also, I, I, I mean, you may you may be able to tell it it doesn't excite me personally. Um, it, it's a it's a Les Paul copy, and um, so I guess because because it's just a Les Paul copy, it it doesn't really for me. And this is only for me, but it doesn't really have a purpose in in my collection. You know, it's not something I go, oh, this is this is something that ha that ticks any particular boxes. It, it's it, the only box it's really ticked for me personally is as a review guitar. Um, for for you guys, if you're thinking about a Les Paul, you know, is this something you should consider? Absolutely, definitely, yes. But make sure that it. It, it gets you fired up emotionally as well. Make sure that it, it does something, you know, for you. Um, the vintage brand, the Mick Ronson tribute that we reviewed a while back, um, here's the link. Um, that excited me emotionally because there was a connection with Mick Ronson. It was a, something different, you know. They'd done an uh, unofficial uh, Mick Ronson signature. So, so that was really cool. This one... I don't know because I'm not a, you know, no disrespect to Larry Carton, but I'm not a rabid Larry Carton fan. So the Larry Carton name doesn't necessarily add anything to this, apart from being a very smart marketing move from Sire so that they can launch this range throughout the world, outside Korea, basically. Um, so, you know, beyond that, it's... Um, it's a it's a knockoff Les Paul. It's a great knockoff Les Paul. Um, put it firmly in your list of considerations, and um, yeah, and we'll we'll dig deeper to see how good it is in future comparisons when we'll we'll, we'll compare it alongside the uh, the Vantage Mick Ronson tribute. We'll compare it alongside Epiphone or Epiphones. And we're looking out for something else in the 500 price range. So um, now I want suggestions of knockoff Les Pauls in the 500 price range. Um, yeah, okay, Harley Benton. Don't everyone say Harley Benton because clearly there's going to be one. 
So we'll put a Harley Benton in there. We've got the Vantage. We've got the Epiphone. What else? Let me know what else there is, and um, we'll we'll add it to the shopping list. That's it. Let's wrap this little baby up, shall we? Uh, thank you very much for watching. Um, it's been a pleasure as always. And I hope to see you next week. I post films every Friday at 12 noon UK time. So um, stick it in your diary. Don't lose us. We, we drop off, you know, YouTube is, you know, is it can be great as, as you know, giving you the thumbnails and... Uh, or it can, you know, sometimes fail miserably and you might just forget about me completely. And I'd hate that. If you enjoy this nonsense, you know, make a note. Every Friday at 12, I post a new film. And, and if that ever fails, check the community section and I'll leave a little note and let you know what tragedies befallen my computer or, or whatever it is that's caused that catastrophic failure of my um, posting schedule because um, I'm committed to do that. I'm committed to do that, build this channel, keep doing more and more and more because quite simply, it just provides this unique opportunity for me to keep buying guitars and um, talking nonsense about them. Uh, so thank you very much. See you next week, I hope. All right. Cheers for now. Bye.